Mercs is a miniature game of sci-fi combat at the skirmish level. The game is set in a future in which the world has been pretty much taken over by mega corporations that have absorbed uh, the governments of the world and now these corporations that own the world are settling their issues using, well, fighters and of course the game is precisely about uh, groups of, of fighters hired by the corporations and fighting for the corporations. Uh, interesting variants of the reasons why uh, the future is grim and dark and there are people fighting in there. Interesting variant of the most common dystopian scenarios that you have in other games and in a lot of sci-fi fiction. The game uh, comes with this manual, well, you have to purchase the manual to learn how to play the game and then you can play miniatures separately. The manual is this beautiful hardcover volume, uh, pretty thick, but don't be worried, the rules of the game actually are not long. Um, there isn't even too much text really, a lot of the manual is about the illustrations, there is a lot of original art and a lot of pictures, the rules are explained and you know with quite some detail, there are a lot of examples, so actually in reality the game is a pretty straightforward and simple one. I believe that the rules, just the rules of the game could be typed in two or three pages. In any case, uh, in this video I'm going to tell you about the rules and gameplay of Mercs and then I'm going to film another video in which I will show you the squads the mi and the miniatures that I've used so far when playing Mercs. Each character in the game is represented by a miniature, of course, that's kind of the point in a miniature game, and by a card with the stats of the character. Each character has an allowance in movement points, that is the number of cards that the character can move. Um, in fact, the movement in this game is represented by these cards. You place the card there in contact with the base of the character, and then the character to move, can move to one of these three slots here. A character with two movement points can move up to two cards. Also, as you move, you can turn the uh, character up to 90 degrees. Or oh, more than that, it costs a movement point. Um, however, if you get close uh, at the base distance with a cover element, say that one, then you can snap to cover for free. Uh, this allows you to um, to perform small adjustments so you do not have to worry. Your card is not going to uh, go back and forth and jump like this like a crazy person without being able to uh, get behind a cover element. The snap uh, into cover uh, uh, option allows you to do that. Um, but that is kind of like the unusual thing that may seem counterintuitive. You have to move to one of the slots on the card. You cannot move any less unless you're using the snapping to cover. But maybe the idea is that these guys here do not like to move just a little bit unless they're into cover. They just move fast. In any case, movement. That was movement. Reaction. This is used during um, the initiative phase and also during melee. Uh, blood points, pretty much health points, life points, when a character loses all of his blood points, a character dies. Personal abilities, which are individual uh, for that character, and corporate abilities. These are abilities that are shared by all characters in the same faction. Then you have a section of the card for weapons, oh, there are also some, some pieces of information here, do not have, have time to cover everything. Weapons. Uh, weapons have a fire number, that is the number that you need to roll uh, or exceed with your roll in order to hit the opponent. All rolls, all tests uh, that you take in the game are simply performed by rolling 1d10, adding and or subtracting modifiers, and what you're trying to do is to roll the target number for that test, for that skill or more. If you roll a modified 6 when you're trying uh, to hit an opponent with this weapon, then you hit the opponent and you reduce the, uh, the blood points of the opponent by 1. If the strength of your weapon is equal to or higher than the armor value 
of the carter that you are targeting. Uh, otherwise, you do not do direct damage. The uh, hit doesn't penetrate, but it may still um, it may still damage the armor of the opponent. You know, it doesn't reach the person behind the armor, but you may be lucky and you do damage to the armor. When you hit an opponent, whether the hit does damage in terms of blood points or not, the target Carter still has to roll for armor failure, and the Carter, or the player controlling the Carter, needs to roll a. Uh, AD6 and to score the armor failure number or more. If that is not the case, then the armor of the Carter is damaged and that will give the Carter penalties um, that will affect the movement and also will lower the armor value. A turn starts with the players rolling dice, a die for each Carter. After you roll the initiative die, you place the die by the Carter. So, uh, as a reminder, and then you will resolve activations. You will activate the Carters one at a time in order of activation. Carters with higher numbers go first and then you just go down until you have covered all characters. If two characters have the same number then you look at the reaction number and the character with the higher reaction number of the two gets to go first and maybe you have actually more than two characters with the same initiative number. If you have a tie that includes both initiative number and reaction, then the characters that are tied for initiative uh, will act simultaneously. The players will have to write down the action that the characters uh, are going to perform, and then there are procedures to resolve simultaneous actions, for example, in case both characters are firing or both characters are moving. When a character activates, the uh, character can usually perform only one action. It can be a special action, such as using a medicate or trying to repair a character's armor. It can have to do with uh, special abilities of the character. But the most common things, the most common actions are, of course, to move and to attack. To move, as I said, you just use these cards here. To attack, uh, you again have to uh, look at the target number, roll the die, and hope to get uh, the result that you're looking for. Some weapons also have templates here that show the particular uh, specific area that is going to be covered by the uh, by the weapon. That weapon, for example, has that template there that looks like a T and covers this area here. Other weapons may have other templates, but the weapons with templates are weapons that are particularly powerful. Um, you can move and fire, uh, but with a penalty, so ideally you will want to move or to fire, and possibly to fire from a good position, because really the point in this game is to achieve tactical advantage, to achieve a position from which you will have good bonuses that will allow you to lower your uh, firing number, your hit number, uh, low enough that you have a good chance to hit because per se the firing number are not that great it is not that easy to hit an opponent if you just fire from a distance the point really is to work and to uh, to put together some good modifiers and, and there are modifiers for short range long range high ground low ground uh, attacking uh, the flank of an opponent, the rear of an opponent, a moving target, a penalty if you fire and move, and that penalty affects both movement and fire. Different types of possible uh, modifiers apply. And really the point is, uh, for example, to find a way to attack an opponent from a high ground, short range, and from and from a rear position of the opponent. Then, of course, you have a good chance of hitting the opponent, but you have to get to that point, which is not always all that easy. If two characters are within a base of distance, then uh, the characters can engage in melee. When you are rolling uh, to resolve melee, again you roll 1d10, you apply modifiers, but this time you are rolling not against the number of the weapon, you are rolling against the reaction of the target character. The better the reaction, the harder the character is to hit in melee. 
Also, you have advanced maneuvers, which I do recommend using as soon as possible after you start playing the game because they really enrich the game. These maneuvers are Overwatch, when you you can choose to place a carter in Overwatch instead of using the carter uh, to move or to attack when the carter activates and the carter will be able to fire at enemies that move uh, in line of sight of the carter in Overwatch. The carter stays in Overwatch from the time which you activate the carter until the next time that the carter activates. This is an interesting concept because suppose that this carter has initiative of 9. I place a carter in Overwatch, so now uh, the carter um, that activated towards the beginning of the turn is in Overwatch. Next turn, say I roll a 2 for his initiative, he activates towards the end of the next turn. So uh, he was on Overwatch for a long time. Which has pluses and minuses, suppose that actually next turn I want to move him, then of course um, other situations may have been more advantageous. Uh, suppression is very similar. Again, the carter does not act immediately, but gets in a situation that will allow him to react to the other player's actions. In this case, the carter does not punish movement, like when you're fighting against the opponent, but tries to prevent enemy's actions and carters that want to act in the line of sight of a carter that is in suppression mode will have to pass a, supp um, a suppression test which is based on courage. Last special action is bounding. You can spend uh, a carter's action to attach the carter to a carter that has not acted yet. And when that carter acts, the two carters will move as one. And the carter that attaches himself to another carter has a movement bonus. There are a lot of things to like about this game. Uh, I like the background story, which I usually don't care much about. I just want to see the action. But here I just found that there was uh, some effort really put into creating an interesting uh, background setting. Uh, I definitely like the fact that uh, you do not have too much meta gaming, uh, meaning you can buy a starter set with f with six miniatures, but you will always be allowed to field only five miniatures per game. That is it which probably will seem like a terrible restriction to somebody, a huge minus, not to me. Because I know that there are miniature games in which really the meta gaming, learning about the units, purchasing the right miniatures, creating the right army, it becomes almost more important than the game itself. There are cases in which uh, you have created an absolutely optimal army, the opponent hasn't been as proficient, and then the game is over before it even starts. There's almost no point in playing the game just to demonstrate that one of the army is, is so incredibly uh, more powerful than the other. Not here, because of the strong limitations. You can spend all the money you want purchasing every miniature in the game, you will still be allowed to only uh, use a group that per se has been balanced and tweaked in such a way that it is unlikely to will easily overpower another another group. Also, um, I like the fact that the rules are so simple and linear, yet thanks to the use of the modifiers, so definitely uh, that simple set of rules results in uh, an interesting um, development of the battle, in tough choices, for you. Um, organic action, your soldiers really need to work together. Um, the traditional uh, sequence, suppress, move, fire, suppress, move, fire and attack from close distance works, but of course you need to be able to make it work while the opponent is trying to do the same and or to disrupt your attempt to to follow uh, that optimal sequence. Um, so I really enjoy this game. Uh, the cards may be a mixed, uh, mixed blessing for some. I like the fact that you do not have to measure things with a ruler. Uh, some other players may find it counterintuitive that you have to move a miniature, the entire length of a card, even though of course you have different slots in which the, uh, the miniature can move, and the, the option of snapping to cover 
really adds the nuances that uh, to me were all it took to make the game feel fluid even though the cards may feel artificial at first. True is that uh, if you're playing with 3D uh, with 3D uh, terrain, the cards sometimes can get a little awkward, can get a little bit in the way, you have to place them vertically or at an elevation. Also some of the templates you form by placing cards one close to the other and moving them around. For example, the template for the grenades, you place two cards more or less like this, not aligned, not exactly aligned, but like this, and then you rotate them and it's not the easiest thing to do. You can probably just make your own template that covers the same area and it will be easier than to have to uh, to put the cards in certain um, combinations of positions each time, but to me this is not a big deal. A uh, big advantage is that this is a simple game, this is definitely easy to teach, but it is a tactically rewarding one, and one that is fun to play. Also one that has some absolutely gorgeous miniatures, but those I will show you in my next video.